Last week, my sister called and asked me um, why, after six months of elevated blood pressure readings, her doctor prescribed medication. I explained to her that high blood pressure was a warning signal for um, cancer, uh, excuse me, that a, a high blood pressure was a warning signal for heart disease, and that um, this could be very important in helping her avoid the disease. Excuse me. Um, she said, why isn't there a test like this for breast cancer? And I explained that with new information, there actually could be. So just as blood pressure is used to monitor um, monitor risk for health disease, for heart disease. Chronic inflammation is used to monitor risk for breast disease. Chronic inflammation is actually a driving force of breast cancer. The exciting new information is that all the known risk factors for breast cancer, well-known ones like radiation or hormones, as well as newly appreciated ones like stress and smoking, they all act through chronic inflammation. It turns out that um, agents that reduce chronic inflammation reduce risk for breast cancer. So chronic inflammation is how the body reacts to injury or conditions that cause cancer. And what happens if the injury persists is that the area becomes hot and red and uh, more blood vessels grow in the area, bringing inflammatory cells, destroying tissue that leads to the initiation and the progression of cancer. It's like if a, a fire starts in the, um, a small closet in a building, and if left unattended, it can destroy the whole structure. So we can actually detect this ongoing battle in this area of injury uh, by de developing a chronic inflammation index, kind of like a smoke detector for breast cancer. And it would involve two pieces. The first is either a saliva or a blood test, which would allow you to look for risk markers of elevated prolonged inflammation, as well as the proteins that are released from the damaged area of the breast. This would be added to a thermogram so a thermogram um, is, a, is a machine that actually measures heat in the body, as indicated at the end of the white arrow. And in chronically inflamed areas, an increase in temperature is due to all those extra blood vessels and the increased blood flow. Thermogram is not a mammogram. It does not use radiation. It's low cost, it's fast, it's painless. And what it does, it's been shown to detect areas that are at risk for breast cancer eight to 10 years before the cancer actually develops. This is unlike a mammogram, which actually detects cancer after it's been formed. You only have to worry about elevated inflammatory markers and uh, an elevated spot on the thermogram if you have prolonged elevation, just like high blood pressure. Investigators have shown that if you measure how long the inflammation has been there, how, how hot the spot is, and how intense the spot is, and for how long, it actually allows you to calculate the risk for cancer. Developing a chronic inflammation index would allow you to ad, um, address primary prevention on several different levels. It would provide impetus for individuals to actually modify their actions. Should they stop smoking? Should they eat more properly? It would provide numerical information to inform individuals of whether they're at increased risk for being exposed to agents that cause breast cancer, like environmental pollutants, insecticides, sprays, etc. It could be a tool to identify unsuspected agents that either increase or decrease breast cancer risk. Right now, we know 40 patients patients come in with 40% um, of patients come in with known risk risk factors for breast cancer, 60% there are unknown risk factors. This would allow us to identify unknown risk factors. And if we could identify agents that actually prevent breast cancer to lower the risk, this would actually be a game changer. It could also be an endpoint to assess whether prevention approaches are effective in real time. This is a test that can be taken again and again. If one has an elevated inflammation index, but you do not have a hot spot on the breast, that's an important time to start looking for hot spots in other parts of the body, because chronic inflammation is known to uh, underlie multiple cancers, as well as other important diseases like neurodegeneration, Alzheimer's, as well as chronic, uh, cardiovascular disease. So this 
assay, if developed, the mother of all assays, would give birth to a suite of assays which would allow you to monitor risk in multiple types of um, major diseases and would immediately provide feedback about actions that are successful and actions that are unsuccessful. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Yes, judges. Okay. Um, this is a tough question, I think, but what might be possible interventions for women who are found to have high indices, and how would they be addressed? How might they be addressed across socioeconomic status, insurance status, race and ethnicity? So basically, who might be the guides to help women with high indices? Well, um, I saw this as a primary prevention assay, which means it's given when you go in to have a physical. So that's the very first point of contact. And to actually have information that you're at increased risk is incredibly important. And as I indicated in the last slide, activates um, primary prevention on multiple levels. And so if you have a lot of women coming in to a physician with elevated uh, points, and uh, that there's perhaps spraying or um, water, bad water in the area, it actually gives you a way to monitor when it went up and do things to monitor how it can come down. So it can be individual, it can be local, and it can be federal. Use this assay to actually get numbers to help. Um, when, when companies say that they've cleaned up uh, an area that's environmentally polluted. Right now, it's very difficult to actually see if that's the case. This would provide a numerical assessment if people are still getting increased inflammation when they enter that area. Any other questions from the? Do you have any uh, data about the specificity? You said chronic inflammation is a very useful marker for a variety of health conditions. Do you have any information about the specificity and the, of the combination of the thermogram and this inflammatory index for breast cancer risk? This is where it becomes tremendously exciting. In the new biology that's coming out right now, what we know is that areas of injury, let's say the breast versus the pancreas versus the, the bladder, when the injury occurs, the initial injury that I was talking about, it releases little pieces of the injured cell, whether they're exosomes, whether it's pieces of DNA, whether it's a small uh, non-coded RNAs, and that tells you exactly where the injury is. Right now, they're starting to de develop assays where you spit in a cup, and it can tell you that you have pancreatic cancer, and that's because the cancer cells, as well as the injury to the tissue, occurs in the pancreas. So it turns out that each organ of your body has different proteins that are released when injury occurs, making this very specific. Likewise, with the thermogram, you look to see, is the hot spot in the breast? Is it in the esophagus? Is it in the bladder? And it tells you where it is. That's why I combined both of them. Any other questions from the judges? No, we're good. Um, then I have a couple. Uh, in your, in your, um, in your application, you said that you think that this could be developed in two to four years. Can you give us a little bit of information about it? That seems quick. I don't know if because you've already worked on this or what, so I just am wondering. I have not worked on this, but I've done extensive background development for this project, and I was stunned to find out that uh, back several years ago, thermograms and mammograms went head to head. And it was people were trying to determine which was better for detecting breast cancer. The reason that a thermogram lost is because they found lots of women that had hot spots, and when they went to look, they didn't have cancer. But then somebody did something really brilliant. They followed the women that had the hot spots and no cancer, and found out that within eight to 10 years, 30 to 50 percent of those women developed can breast cancer in those areas. Oh, wow. This is incredible. On the other side, the saliva test or the blood test, that's actually being developed right now for cancer and for the specificity. And with the, the types of um, uh, materials you can put in your mouth to absorb the, the proteins, exosomes, nucleic acids, etc., this can be developed immediately with our nanotechnology in California. Wow, that's exciting. Um, 
we're, we're still we're still waiting for the judges. So that's fine. Um, and it, uh, it seems like the funding might uh, need more than what you might win here. And I'm just wondering if you have other ideas about where to get additional funding. Absolutely. Do oh, good. Want, do you want to hear about that? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I think that this is, ex when, when I was asked to think about primary prevention, um, it's not an area, I, I work on early detection, but to go very early, to where there is no cancer takes you in an unknown area. And it turns out that there are several diseases that are initiated by chronic inflammation, like esophageal cancer, like IBD, colon cancer, stomach cancers, et cetera, et cetera, that are, are killing people. They're the, the most lethal types of cancers. They all start with chronic inflammation. There are projects ongoing worldwide that seek to do early detection or primary prevention of those diseases, and I would tell them about our ideas for breast cancer and how it could give birth to a whole suite of, of risk assays for these other types of cancers as well. Awesome, thank you so much.